Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In this channel, we talk about ed tech, business, mindset, and online teaching. Now, in this video, I would like to address three things that teachers do that are somehow preventing them from uh, fully maximizing the power of online tools. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about why these things are problems and uh, what you can do to, of course, um, solve that. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first issue that I notice that many online teachers do is that they try to, they usually spend a lot of money when they want to learn about different uh, apps. Um, they think that in order to have successful uh, online classes, they need to know at least 10 different apps. Now, this is so far from the truth, and let me tell you why. First things first, if you have to take the time to learn 10 or 15 or 20 different apps, then you are wasting your time because you don't need 20 apps or websites in order to run a successful online class, okay? Not even a successful online business. You don't need that much. So the first thing that I highly recommend you do is first try to analyze what exactly is it that your students need, what exactly is it that they want, and what is it that you want them to achieve. And not only that, but also take into account uh, their background, like their cultural background or their um, level and uh, basically their surroundings, okay? So if you are teaching and uh, your students don't have a pretty, I mean, a good internet connection, then you don't want to use a website that will require them uh, to have a good internet connection in order to be used, okay? So that's the first thing, thinking about what is it that your students want and what is it that they need and what, you, I mean, and what you want them to accomplish, okay? Uh, that's the first thing. Like, there are lots of online experts that will tell you that, okay, these are 15 apps that you can use for online learning. And that, yes, you can use them. But the thing is that you do not need to use all of them. You just need to use the ones that are related to your context, the ones that are related to your students' needs, wants, and interests. And uh, the second thing that I'd like to address is when you're trying to use a new app, okay, remember that you not only have to learn, okay, about this app and how you can use it, but you also have to teach that, I mean, those things to your students. And if you who, I mean, you are the teacher, if you're struggling to find out how to use a certain app, then imagine how your students would feel if they were the ones who, uh, I mean, have to learn how to use it. So finding out what is best for you and what's the easiest thing for you to do and for your students should always be first. It doesn't matter if you have like this great app but um, with like lots of uh, tools that you can use and um, with lots of activities that you can implement with your students. If it's hard for you to understand how to use them and it, it's highly likely that it's going to be way harder for your students to understand how to use a certain app or how to use a certain website. So bearing that in mind when deciding what apps and what websites you want your students to use is essential. You don't want to give your students a website or you don't, or an app or something that is going to be hard for them to learn how to use because they will have to be, I mean, they will have to use it for a prolonged period of time and you too. So the whole idea when it comes to apps and websites is that it has to make your life easier not harder, okay? So if something that you're using, yes, like it's amazing according to like all of these people out there, but if it's hard for you to use, it's gonna be harder for your students. So even if you see like, I don't know, like hundreds of people talking about this website or about these new activities uh, on this certain app, 
if you if doesn't if that does not make your life easier then don't use it and the last thing i'd like to tell you is that you have to be mindful when it comes to how you are spending your time so if you're teaching a lot of people if you're teaching a lot of uh, classes if you're teaching a lot of uh, um students then you have to be mindful of your own time and you cannot be preparing um, an activity and uh, this activity is going to take you let's say one hour to prepare or one hour and a half or two hours for your students to then complete it in like two minutes so it makes no sense so you have to be mindful if this is something that your students are going to finish in five minutes why would you spend one hour preparing it and let's say that you think that they're going to finish in five minutes and that's fine okay just think are you going to use it later do you have the same group are you going to use this in the short term in the long term at some point or probably the next year but if you are not going to use it again then why would you waste your time on creating something that's only going to be used once it makes no sense <laughs> So if you're going to do something, if you're going to create something, whether it is an online worksheet or whether it is a game or something, you have to be mindful. If you're going to use it again, then okay, it's fine. You can just spend one hour doing it because you'll use it again. But if you're not going to use it again, why would you spend one hour in an activity that's going to be completed in five minutes? It makes no sense. So those are the three things that I wanted to talk about today. If these are topics that you're interested in, then please Click the subscribe button, like this video, and leave a comment down below. I would love to know what you thought about this. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video.